All right, Paul. So we talked about taking your dream, turning it into reality. What does it actually take to start that process, right? So we're going to stop procrastinating. That was the biggest thing we talked about. Now let's just talk about is there a need for what I want to do in my area? That's a big deal. And I think, John, on Instagram, you can look and see other people's businesses. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, man, they're crushing it you know, doing this service or that service, and that might work in their state or country, but it might not necessarily work in your zip code, in your Exactly. Area. You definitely want to do the research before you set up shop. Just because you want to open up the business in a green industry scenario to whether you're mowing lawns, you're doing hardscapes, or you're doing irrigation or lighting installs, there's a, such a huge band of things that are in the green industry. Uh, whatever it is, you got to make sure that there is a need and a, a demand for those things. Because if you don't, let's just say you're going to install lighting. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's kind of funny. I live in Northwest Indiana and there's tons of guys across the country that do holiday lighting. Mm -hmm. In our area, it's not a big thing, even though we get all the snow and everything. It's, it's weird. So there's still people that do it, but it's just not, it doesn't have the traction that it has in other parts of the of, of the nation. You want to make sure that even though you have that desire to open that type of service up, you got to find people that are going to be able to buy it. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? How do we find them? Yeah. Well, one thing that I learned early on, thanks to a mentor sharing this with me that I'm passing on to you, is the internet is your friend. And so mm -hmm. here in Atlanta, we have three of the top 100 lawn and landscape companies, like right in my backyard. Fellas actually out there blowing as we yeah. <laughs> as I record this. So a couple of those that are like locally right where we're at right now is Gibbs Landscape and Russell Landscape. My mentor was like, just go to their website and see if they have on their website. He already knew the answer, but mm -hmm. see if they have on their website, what services they offer. And so I just type in the Google Gibbs Lawn Care, or it was Gibbs Landscape and it pops up. Between Russell and Gibbs, they're, they're like 35 to $45 million revenue a year. Companies between 350 and 500 employees. They're huge, and they're right in my market. And I'm on the website, and they actually show on our weekly maintenance program. We'll mow all the turf areas. Mm -hmm. We'll edge these areas. We'll offer this kind of ornamental pretty. They have literally post, because they're trying to recruit customers, what services they offer, and they have their different packages. And so the light bulbs are going off, okay, if they're able to turn $35 million or $45 million of revenue and they're servicing the same neighborhoods that I'm aiming to service and these are the services that they offer, then I know there's a market for those services. Now, obviously, they got their stuff together. Mm -hmm. It's not a guarantee that I'm going to be able to get part of that market share, but there is a market. Exactly. Using the Internet's a great way to find like who the big players are in your area. And then just remember, you're going to see for like every legitimate business, you're going to have like three or four trucks in a truck that are flying under the radar. Right. And not that that's a big deal, but it's just when you start looking at market saturation, you have to find a need that is not being met. So, yeah, maybe they're doing just the lawn mowing. Maybe somebody wants some designs put into it. I know that's kind of a crazy thing, but may, there have been people that literally built their businesses off of putting different types of stripes in people's lawns. So not only is it finding something that people want, but then being able to find it, just tweak it a little and do something a little bit different. And let me piggyback real mm -hmm. quick off of that. Just don't look up like what big companies are in your area. Right. Look up what services are actually offering. Because when I picked Payjack up at the airport this morning, he's like, oh, Brightview, you know? Well, they're the biggest company in the entire United States of America. So what services they offer in Chicago is different than Atlanta, even though the company has branches, headquarters, and, and mm -hmm. services, most of the United States of America, I like to even dig deeper into the regionals, like, you know, the right. Russell landscapes and Gibbs, they're probably not, I, I know that some of them aren't up north. They're, right. They might have be in Atlanta, Charleston, South Carolina, even down to Tampa, Florida, but, but they're, they're regional. And so I want to emulate what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to find uh, Brightview with snow plows down here in Atlanta, Georgia. They're going to have that 
The pine the, straw and lawnmowers. Oh, yeah, the pine <laughs> straw. You guys love the pine straw. We, we remove pine straw from our areas and put in hardwood mulches. It's kind of funny when you come down here. That is a huge, huge service. It doesn't fly so well up north. Just real quick, let's just talk about some tools besides we're talking about the internet, using the internet, right, to help you, you out. There's a great website out there. It's datausa.io. Check this out because one thing that I like to do is I like to paint a picture of what our ideal client looks like. That doesn't mean it looks like Paul. It's like, oh, well, you know, he's an attractive guy with a beard. Or it's Miss Jones who's, you know, it, no, we're not talking about that. We're talking about using data points to our advantage. Mm -hmm. DataUSA.io, if you go there, you can put in your town or the town that you want to work in. And what's great is it gives you data points of like median household incomes. What's the median house worth in that area? And what it can do is you might think, oh, this would be a great place to work. But you start looking in, into it and you go, the house value, home values are only like 150000 in this area. Whereas in the next town over, they're $400,000. You're going to have a, a much easier time selling your services and products to the people that have the disposable income. And not that everybody in, in that town has plenty of disposable income. We all have our things. But it gives you a better idea of where you could find that niche that you could find, settle into, and be profitable. Yeah, and I think a rule of thumb is to go where the money's at because, let's face it, landscaping lawn care services are luxury services. We mm -hmm. talk about the four walls and, and how you got to take care of your, you know, your shelter right. and, and, and the basic survivals first. And so folks that can go beyond that and they can pay you to, to do these luxury services, they obviously, their income has to be larger. So they have the money for that. And so if a house, like you mentioned, John, it's $400,000 and they got a few cars in the driveway, exactly. they're more likely to spend money on the lawn landscape services than the hundred and fifty thousand dollar ish home that that might be more focused on the four walls, right? And that's not to profile people because you read the Millionaire Next Door by St Thomas Stanley. Most millionaires are they live way below their means and, mm -hmm. and and things like that. So don't you know get it twisted. But in general, that neighborhood with the four hundred thousand dollar houses are going to spend more on our industry services than the neighborhood that got the money to do right. so. Right, the, the people that are in a a lower bracket, you find an area that has a lower median income, they're going to look at these services as a commodity mm -hmm. as opposed to the value that they bring. You know, they may think, I just need my lawn knocked down so I don't get a ticket from the city, and you could do it once a month or two, twice a month, whereas the people that would put more value into the, the services that we provide, they're, they don't care. They're like, we want to keep our property values high. We take pride in our home. We take pride in the things that we have. Let's take care of them. We'll spend the money on it. Yeah. And, and you start getting into neighborhoods, even in past the $400,000 range in Atlanta, mm -hmm. the HOA requires that the garden bed, you know, have fresh pine straw mm -hmm. or you could have mulch. But if your garden beds are looking raggedy and bare, they'll actually give you a notice that you have, you know, till X date to get this fixed or you'll actually get a fine. And many neighborhoods here in Atlanta, it's actually the HOA rule that you have to have a fertilization and weed control program. You have to actually send them in your contract that you have this fertilization company or that weed control company because otherwise then you'll get weeds in your yard in these high-end neighborhoods in the Atlanta market. It's required that you have no weeds in your yard and you have the beds looking fresh. So that's the neighborhood where mm -hmm. my ideal customers are. That's where I want to build my business because I already know they're required to spend money on these services. Right. And um, starting with that ideal customer, it's so important because then you can just reverse engineer and attract that customer um, rather than just willy-nilly winging it and it won't it, go well. Exactly. That. So the biggest takeaway from this for you guys that are starting out, and even if you've been in business for many years and you seem to be not, you don't have the traction that you've desired, Take a few steps back and make sure there's a need for the services that you provide. 